he obviously, in his time, was immensely uh, influential. People believed that he was the preeminent designer of golf courses. He, uh, he, you know, he was involved in, in a small way, in a big way, in an intermediate way, in so many golf courses in the United Kingdom that if I had known him, I would have looked up to him without doubt. Well, it is said in uh, the profession of golf design that uh, one's personality comes out in the, the courses you create. And in uh, Braid's case, he was a marvellous man, a friendly man uh, with a nice sense of humour and I immaculate manners. And really, that's come out in his courses. They're all full of good fun. And uh, I think that's perhaps what stamps the Braid courses as worth finding and following and playing on. At least that's how I find it. Well, I have to agree with Peter, and I think you will too when you find yourself on a James Braid course. To learn more about the man and his life, we leave Scotland and head to London. Here we soak up its colorful history and its proud traditions. And to learn more about one of golf's great ambassadors, we head to Surrey, to Walton Heath. It's here we learn about the great man of golf, history, and life, James Braid. One of our proudest claims to fame here at Walton Heath is that we have had our own triumvirate. Triumvirate, you'll remember, were Varden, Braden, Taylor, but we have our own triumvirate here. We have perhaps the, one of the greatest golfers of all time, James Braid, who was professional here from 04 until he died in 1950. And then perhaps we have one of the greatest club makers. He was, took over from Braid, he came here soon after Braid's death in 1950 and was here until 1977. And he retired and actually carried on as being our club maker. But in 1977, we had Ken McPherson arrive and he is still here today. And it's generally held throughout the golfing world that Ken McPherson is the ultimate club professional. So that is our own triumvirate. And I think it would be very nice for Ken to take you around this James Braid exhibition. This is James Braid's showroom and workshop. This is the building that we're standing in at the moment. From the outside, it looks very much as it would have done in James Braid's day. James Braid employed six club makers, so there really was a bit of a mass production line going on in this building. The early James Braid clubs can usually be spotted by the wording on the back. If it says James Braid at Walton Heath near Epsom, it's one of his earlier clubs. After James Braid started winning his championships, the words near Epsom were not required. The golfing world knew exactly where Walton Heath was. In these days, James Braid would have played a lot of golf. He would have made many golf clubs. He then became a golf course architect. He was clearly a very busy man. And this just shows the early days of club making at the vice here nearly always worked with chisels, with hand saws, with files, nothing like the present marketing these days in golf clubs. The door that James Braid has seen entering here is still the same original door that we've just walked through. This is very much showing how James Braid would have really masterminded a club making operation very many years ago. There was a well known saying about James Braid. Many members of the club used to say, Nobody could ever be as wise as James Braid looked. I think looking at that photograph, you know exactly what they meant. This photograph shows James Braid very late in his life, sheltering under the umbrella with his waterproofs on, muffs round his fingers. He's doing the starting for a visiting party coming to Walton Heath. Five times Open champion, a great club maker, one of the world's great golf course architects, yet still putting the service to others more than his own comfort. I suspect he must have been on his way back to the clubhouse for something just after going through all that. We have a scorecard here showing James Braid having completed the new course in 64 shots, age 68. 
And on his 78th birthday, he held the old course in 74. He had his 18th hole in one, age 79. He had a two at every hole on both courses. James Braid on the first tee on his 80th birthday. He had the tradition of breaking his age, and this continued until his 80th birthday, when he failed to do so, do so by one shot. We have it in good authority, the conditions were not good on that day. Simply the fact that it was the 6th of February possibly tells you everything about what the conditions were, were likely to be. Clearly again, he's dressed up, trying to safeguard himself against the cold. Unfortunately, he never had the chance to play on his 81st birthday. On the 27th of November 1950, he died following an operation and he's buried in St. Peter's Churchyard, Walton on the Hill. James Braid's grave is tended by the golf club and we always have Heather on the James Braid's grave. We just think that's the most appropriate way to celebrate the life of the most wonderful man. James Braid's grave is in St. Peter's Churchyard in the village of Walton on the Hill, literally 300 yards from the first tee at Walton Heath. Dorothy did say I had for her full permission to look after the grave, but under no circumstances should James Braid's grave look any different to any other grave in the churchyard. James Braid was a man of the village and it would have broken his heart to, for him to feel that he was being made more important than any of the other fellow villagers. And it's always a privilege to come up here and for us all just to say thank you to James Braid and for everything that she did for Walton Heath Golf Club. Some of the best James Braid golf courses are here in Highland, and Visit Scotland has put together a series that you will really, truly enjoy. This one is the Highlands Trail, but we will be featuring some of the others in the future. We invite you to Scotland and enjoy the talent of James Braid. I hope you get an opportunity to find out more about James Braid, and a good place to start is Scotland. What are you going to do for some fun today? I hope you get a chance to play What are you gonna do to bless your life Walking down the old fairway Golfing Country, your passport to the world's best golfing destinations.